Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 256, April 18th, 2023. We just released Wix 4. We've taken roughly a couple weeks off of doing Wix stuff and kind of let uh, people check it out, kick the tires, and they've they've kicked a little too hard, I think. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that are not with us right here, right now, as always. Um, go ahead and say hi in the chat. We have a bunch of people, Jacob, Chate, Christopher and Bert and other people. If you're here, go ahead and say hi. Uh, we have a lot of things to cover. Let's just kind of uh, get into it. One, I want to talk about the Wix 5 plan um, and things like that. I am going to have dates out here. I am open to suggestions on dates. I basically put a line in the sander several times to say, hey, here are uh, dates to talk about to get going. Um, we are going to have a Wix 401. Everybody said we were going to have a Wix 401. I didn't want to have a Wix 401, but we're going to have a Wix 401. It's just the reality of it. Because uh, as we go through the issues and triage, which we'll do last, um, we'll see that there's a couple things that we really do need to take for into a 401. A Things that should have been in 4RTM that were not found until, well, in the last two weeks. Uh, I want to talk about the plans in the order so that we kind of have a rough idea mostly about dates and processes for these things before we then go through and pick the issues that will end up in 401, in 5, or off into some future release should someone decide to pick it up, which is where the majority of issues will go. Hey, Ron, welcome. So um, let's talk about Wix 5 because that's actually the fun thing. I want to start with the timeline. This is roughly what we've discussed in the past with a couple specific, uh, well, with specific dates stuck on it, with specific names stuck on it. And um, I basic, this basically says we have roughly nine months of doing stuff in V5, and then we have a couple RCs, and then that last month of then getting the release out the door. We haven't done a release in a year. This will be one of the fastest releases of Wix uh, ever, uh, certainly the fastest major release. So we'll see how it goes. But this feels like, I th it felt like a, re a reasonable thing. Uh, dates, I thought we could also put preview one in December of this year if we wanted for some reason, um, things like that. So I'm tossing these dates out as things that kind of made sense. The questions I have is, do these dates make sense? Or I think they're they're roughly correct, but if people want to kind of move them around a little bit, that would be interesting. The other thing that I'm curious, I would definitely like to get feedback on is, had the idea of calling the first release preview one, uh, mostly like that's the way .NET does. It's kind of like, hey, here's the first thing get the, you know, here's the first Wix, but people I think ignore previews a lot. So one thought is to rename preview one to RC1 and then RC1 to RC2, RC2 to RC3, and just basically make it a bunch of release candidates with the assumption that people ignore previews. Or keep preview one, which is essentially when we say, hey, we're code complete, now let's switch into mode of fixing bugs. So I'm I'm definitely open to suggestions kind of on those any thoughts around preview versus RC, if we should just do RCs, and rough ideas about those dates, if they're like, yeah, that looks good. And of course, we can always adjust as we get a little farther along if we feel things are. I don't want to push it out because pushing it out starts compressing those RCs and that doesn't um, work out real well. So um, other thoughts. I like to preview checks box and NuGet and we'd love to see, we're not doing quarterly previews. <laughs> We're not going to do that many releases. Um, th that's just too much effort. Um, so the yearly is going to move us to being more agile. So um, anyway, do you guys have any thoughts? Or you're like, yeah, whatever, preview one's fine, RC one's fine. The dates look roughly right, and we'll refine as we get closer if we need to. Any thoughts out there? I wouldn't mind pulling in preview one. Pulling in being December sometime? Yeah, or even earlier. Um, it, it really depends on what we put on the schedule, obviously. But if we get to a point, basically preview one should ship as soon as we are feature complete. So I'm fine if we say, you know, if we target January 5th as a no later than or feature complete. 
Yeah. My hope is we can kind of get into a cadence. Like this is just kind of the way we run every year. Um, so trying to have a, a consistent date there. Um, that, that was one of the things I was trying to think of. Um, Bert has also liked the idea of a preview in December. So when you say preview in December, December is kind of a funky month, uh, given holidays. Are you saying like a December 5th or a December 20th? Um, something like that. Do you have, no, we don't have sprints. No, we're not. No, no. People are not working on this like all day, every day. No, we're not doing sprints. We're not doing agile, any of those things. We have, we'll have a set of features we want to work on and a timeline that people can fix bugs in. That's, that's kind of the way to think about it. So Bert, you're saying have a preview in December and then add a RC. So have still have three RCs. That's, that's actually a lot like what we did with RC, uh, with Wix 4, right? We had a preview one in December or was it November? December. And then three RCs and RTM, right? Right. Nobody's going to confirm my memory. I have the dates if I just pulled up the right spreadsheet. I don't have it in front of me. Did I lose I think people? we did oh, four okay. RCs, though. Four RCs. Yeah, we did do four RCs. So that must have meant... Let me just pull it. I have the dates here somewhere. Documents. I have all of my last meetings in the last, last meeting, which I can pull up real quick. All right, good. That didn't mess up. Thing. Release plan. RC1 was December 16th. Right. So... So a preview in early December. I, I'd be all right with that. I don't know that we need four RCs given that there's going to be four. I feel like there's one before Christmas. Yeah, there's an RC on December 16th. Uh, RC, so Wix 4 RC1 was December 16th. So preview one was in uh, October, November. Um, so the idea of bringing preview one to say, let's just, can I edit this here? Uh, I don't want to try to edit here. It's too much of a... Uh, so Bert's kind of throwing out the proposal of a December 5th let's say preview one and then January 5th turns into RC1, RC2, RC3, and then RTM. It's not bad either. Another way to look at it is we wouldn't necessarily have to do a January 5th, i.e. oh so close to major holidays. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a forcing function here too to go, look, we're done, try it over the holidays and then, yeah, no, this is just a bug fixes, right? We're just a bug fix mode. It, it's, you know, Really, I guess really after preview one or bug fixer. I don't know, trying to get people in. I'm hoping we can get into some sort of rhythm here so that people know what to expect so that they know, oh, if I don't look at this release and this timeline, then my bug doesn't show up until another year later. Well, is... that, that, that calls for far earlier releases. Far that earlier comes, releases? That comes back to my previous comment about, you know, what does code complete mean in terms of previews? Yeah, well, I mean, but we need time to do the things we want to do too. So I'm I'm hesitant to pull up much farther than December or November because at that point we're like, hey, you get four months to work on Wix and then we're done. Well, so no, I'm 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 suggesting we could do previews before feature complete. I don't want to do more releases. <laughs> I, um, I, okay, well, I don't I don't really want to do more releases. They just they all take work. So. I understand. So, all right, I, I like, I, I, I thought about the idea of doing December 5th preview one or something like that. So I kind of like bringing that back around. More automation help. Yeah, no, there's just a lot of things that go into doing all the previews. So I, I don't want to do more of them. Um, if you people want dev builds, we provide the dev builds. They're readily available, right? Every single build is available. I guess no, the only problem all, with doing Zach, those exist right now. Like the, the, the every PR build exists in the GitHub package feed, so those are there now. So sorry, Sean, you were saying. I think the only problem with December is that means we don't have the holidays to put in the features. Yeah, I. <laughs> yep, I. Uh, that's why I like January fifth. It's kind of like yeah, here we go. But maybe preview one is uh, yeah no because. Yeah. Yep, I had the same thought. Because sometimes it gets quieter on the holidays. You're like, yeah, I'm going to finish these things. Yay. Yeah, but by December, you should be fixing bugs, not creating new features. But we're not going to get bugs if we don't have a release. So, foul meat ovum. 
All right, so this has been great feedback. I'm gonna think about the December 5th preview one and RC one as January 5th, that that variation of this timeline, something like that. And, you know, knowing that and, and seeing kind of where we're at, it's, I feel like it's somewhere in this zone if we're gonna just, just do this yearly. Boom, 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 and uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, good feedback, thank you. Uh, and And to reiterate the point that Zach brings up, Every build of Wix 5 will be available on the GitHub feed. So you, if you you want to be cutting edge, you can be there all the time. Every single, uh, every single, I think PR generates a develop build. So you can get all to them. To go. The Kafir artifact. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't want to do more releases. It's just more work. It's like, yeah, they could do it. They're still going to have four or five months to pull all this stuff together. So we'll go from there. All right. Um, so process, the process of Wix 5, uh, it will start after this meeting Delta, like 20 minutes ish or something for me to finish pushing the buttons that I have all queued up. The big one is that the Wix re for the Wix four repo is going to be renamed the Wix repo. So we're going to work out of one repo. I mentioned this last meeting or the meeting before that, that I was looking at doing this. This looks like it's going to work out really well. Um, if you are currently enlisted in Wix 4, then you won't have to do anything because GitHub will do the redirects for you. So you can stay and listen to the Wix 4 repo, but it'll actually be the Wix repo on, uh, on GitHub. You should probably fix your remotes at some point. It's not a hard process to do, um, but it's just going to be Wix and we're going to keep moving versions forward with this with tags on uh, for all the uh, versions that we release out there. That means that the develop branch, as soon as I finish this, you know, AKA within within the hour after this meeting, uh, the develop branch will be set to be Wix 5 preview one, um, which will be released at the, near the end of this year, very beginning of next year kind of thing. So that's the plan for Wix 5 development. Uh, and if you have ideas and things like that, it's gonna be time to start writing uh, whips and things like that. I have one that I've, started sketching out. I have four more that I need to sit down and write, but I've been busy. So uh, yeah, so if you have big ideas for Wix 5, we can start putting them as whips. Actually, you can put them in at any time. We'll just figure out what release and we will start triaging things. Today is not the day that we're gonna go through the V future milestone for triage because I think we have enough stuff to triage. Plus we had all this to cover. So the next meeting we will go through all the V future stuff and pull them into to the V5 thing. I would have liked that to be this week, but we have a lot of other things that we have to talk about because of 401. So that's the plan for Wix 5. It should be fairly straightforward. It doesn't really change. It's the same process we used with Wix 4, except the repo name is now just Wix and everything will be in one easy place to find all the code. So that's that. Moving on. Yep, all right. So as I hinted, the thing that we're going to focus on the rest of day, I think, well, the focus of today and for a little bit is going to be 401. And I put a date in the sand as because we don't want it to hang around for a long time, but we do want to kind of mop up all the things that people want because I really don't want to do more of these releases in four. They just take time and attention away from doing five stuff and we have enough stuff to do in five. So more four releases are uh, not helpful. So um, I put the line in the sand at May 5th, which is just a couple weeks away. Um, I don't know if that's too fast. It might be too fast, but I thought I'd put it in as the earliest that I thought we probably could could go out with a 401 um, and then get people's feedback on what they thought about that. I don't think we could do it sooner than May 5th. Do we need to do it later is I think probably my question. Yes. <laughs> All right. When, yeah, like what's another proposal? Like, I don't want to go three months. I mean, like, no, the, no, it, it should be two too months. far. Two Wait, months? May, May 5th is like two weeks away. Um, yes. And as we will discuss um, when we get to triage, uh, there are a couple of issues that I would nominate for, for 401. But that, I mean, basically that means 
probably we would that would be the set of things we take in 401. Maybe so, a bug that comes in over the next week, but that that starts to become our limit. So I would suggest two months as a way of you know uh, giving some more time for more critical issues to come in. So Chris has thrown out the idea of end of May. Yeah, I I don't want to no, I don't want to do major holidays. I don't want to do major holidays. <laughs> All right. But I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to do a holiday that most people have off. We lose the day. So I, mean, I, was, I think that's too far. Two months from today. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I, I'm resetting to the fifth. Every everything is now the fifth, <laughs> um, which is going to be weird when it's like on a Sunday. Um, June no, 5th it, is a Monday. It'd be June 5th, two months from Wix for RTM. I don't think we need that long, but I guess that would work. I don't know that we need two months. I just think we need more than a month again, because it's two weeks from today. Two months from Wix for RTM is, you know, six weeks out, which, you know, would basically be two meetings worth of triage of anything incoming. I, that's my hedge against 402. Yeah. I would love if we did not do a 402, but I think that means we need to give people more time to find any lingering issues. So I I agree like three months is too late. Yeah, that's... We have some issues that people, you know, that would prevent people from taking up four. Um, yep. One month is too soon, in my opinion. So... You know, two seems a natural compromise. Um, you know, we could do different numbers. What were you thinking, Sean? Of the, or was the fifth closer? I mean, June fifth is better than June eighteenth. <laughs> yeah, but like May eighteenth would probably be better than June fifth because I just. I don't think we're going to get much more from four. I think there's definitely people that will have been expecting a 401 and will be waiting for that. <laughs> like the old Microsoft thing, you never pick up the dot O. <laughs> that is well, true. Yeah, well, I'm going to become even less interested in fixing bugs in four rapidly from here. So, um, well, what about... The 16th of May. Oh, you said 18th of May. I pulled that in earlier. I was picking a Wix meeting date then. Um, well, it sounded like Bob li what, liked the specific days. So the fifth literally of, one month from today is the 18th. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, the 5th feels far to me as well. I'm counting from the 5th because that's the amount of time that people have had to use Wix for. So I would like to give them, uh, you know, a month to find bugs. And then we have to fix them. So if we gave them a month, that would be May 5th. Yeah. Do we then fix everything and ship on, I don't know, May 19th, that being exactly two weeks after May 5th? I don't care about the actual dates or what it's worth, just relative chunks of time. June 5th feels far. What a, so I, I'm trying to pick a new date then so that we can just kind of tell people, yeah, here it is. Um, so definitely not May 5th, right? So what's on the screen is we're not, that's the, that's too early, pretty universally. Um, well, so I was proposing four weeks after that, let's cut it in half. May 19th is, a, is that Friday. If we want to do another Friday release. Maybe I was going to say, you, didn't, you keep telling me you don't like the Friday releases. Well, uh, yes, We could put them on Monday. I mean, you know, go do the 22nd. Again, I don't really care about the exact duration, so. Okay. Let's go to the next triage. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we will have another triage in the second, if everything goes normally. Um, picking a date without knowing the... Yeah, so Jacob is picking up the exact same thing that I was going to put up. We're going to see how many issues come in. Can we get all these things done in that time frame? Is a 
you know, Jacob brings up is a is a good point. How about we on the second, we we basically say we're going to pick the date that is somewhere before June fifth and after June eighteenth. Like it's in those two weeks on the second, we should be able to make that decision, right? Yeah. So sure. Wix four hundred one is before before June sixth, <laughs> June fifth or earlier. No later than June 5th. Come up with the right words here. So many different ways of saying the same thing. So it's going to be, you know, no later than June 5th. And we'll look at the meeting in two weeks to see, you know, how much has come in after we've had almost a month of it being released. Seem reasonable? But yeah. no later than June 5th. All right, cool. Let's do that. So knowing that, how do things work in Wix 401? Um, if you're fixing a bug that is going into 401, uh, submit it against develop, which means you're submitting about v5. The fix should go into v5. It should be you know a normal, good fix, except it also, uh, if you want it to get to 401, you need to make it easy for it to be cherry-picked into 401. And I, I we're not, the committers are going to cherry-pick the fixes in the 401. Um, we're not going to do a lot of PRs and people like double targeting and stuff like that. No, we'll just cherry pick the feet, the, uh, fixes over 401. I will work out the exact process for that amongst, uh, um, the three of us here to kind of sort out to make that as easy as possible. Um, there will be some branch develop V401 or something there that will be short lived. It will live long enough for us to get the release out. Um, don't target that. Don't try to say, Ooh, I want to put this in 401. Please go commit it there. No. Commit your, get your fix into V5, get it in there well, get it in there probably with a unit test to verify that it is fixed in V5 and make it easy for us to bring it to 401. And I'm going to go put comments. Some people actually submitted uh, pull requests already, which is great. Um, so I'm going to go put comments in and say, hey, make sure that these are easy. If you want us to consider them for 401, make sure you make these easy um, to get into a 401 branch. So you do not get to say, hey, I'm going to take this PR and just fix it in 401. Don't do that. <laughs> Get the fix into V5 nice and easy and make it easy for us to bring it to 401. And easy being? Like a commit. Okay. And uh, a test and no random changes that are not related to the fix. Like it, if you think you have something you want in 401, you need to make it really, really tiny and targeted. Um, do that fix in V5 and then we'll bring it over 401. Good. So, and because the bigger it gets, we're just not going to take it. It's like, no, <laughs> like there, there's just too much stuff going on here. Um, something would have to have gone really wrong for us to take a larger change of 401. Um, and chances are that we're going to have to do those. Um, so anyway, so uh, if you want to get a fix into to 401, get it nice and clean in V5, and then we'll talk about bringing it over to 401. So that's... And start with an issue. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, everything should start with an issue, honestly. <laughs> I mean, yes. don't just send a pull request without an issue that explains why, what you're doing, why you're doing, all that kind of stuff. And if it's a feature, if it's not tiny, it should have a whip and all those kinds of things. So that's the kind of stuff we normally do during triage. Um, so the goal here is that there are going to be very few of these, like five or something. I don't know. Less than 10 when we get done. That's my hope. And they're all like... Code, code changes are one line, two line code changes and a new method in one of the unit tests with the test necessary test data, right? So there should be significantly more test code added. I mean, if necessary, more test code added, the change hopefully in 401 is very, very small. That's the ideal. Anything outside of that means we're getting out of the ideal and we definitely are looking at, uh, definitely digging into that more. So that's 401 and we're not going to do this for very long and we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. The goal is not to spend a lot of time on it. It's like, we're going to go to a set of fixes. We'll bring them over. We'll get 401 out and we are going to focus our time on V5 and all the fixes will be in five. So if your fix goes into V5 and we choose not to take it 401, that's okay. Cause it's already set up for V5 and it's already in a dev build that you can go um, see it working and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So, V401, we will have the exact date. It'll be before, uh, it'll be no later than June 5th. And we will pick the, we will reevaluate that date um, next meeting in two weeks based off of the issues, which means 
we should look at today's issues. Ready? All right. Here we go. Bob, triage? Yes? I suppose. Yeah, so excited. All so right. So many. So many. Yeah, we have 21 open. Clearly, people decided that V4 was a time. Oh, V4 released. I will now go spend some time and look at it. So I should hit refresh. Um, make sure I have the latest. All right. So starting at the top, and we'll work our way down. The V4 how to guides. So V4. Um, it's not a broken link. Yeah. So there are no real plans I know of to bring the V3 how tos over necessarily. Um, they need a lot of work and need to be updated and redone and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, reconsidered. Reconsidered. A of, that's a that's a good really way to put old, it. Yep. There's old content that just doesn't apply anymore. Yep, um, yep, and yep. then there's some bad advice like, here, use the Visual C++ merge module. <laughs> right. So, so. yeah, uh, this needs, if someone wants to pick up the how-to guides, this needs someone that's going to pick it up, take care of it, and maintain it. Right? This is a This is a feature unto itself. Um, Aaron Stebner used to do this a very, very, very long time ago. Um, he obviously isn't hanging out in Wix anymore. I don't... And so they've kind of gone that. So if someone wants to pick this up and bring up more than the reference material, there's definitely work to be done here. I, I have Bob working on like the Fire Giant tutorial and things like that. We have a whole lot of documentation work there. So I kind of said, Bob, go work on that. So he's not the person that's doing the how-tos even if you wanted to right now, which I don't think you said. Ooh, let me jump on that right away. I do not recall saying that. Right. So there's a lot of work here. Um, this goes up for grabs. So by the way, we are in the new process. We've been in the new pro We've been in the process. Oh, by the way, um, in the milestones here, we now have, I need to clean these up a little bit, but we have 401 and we have 500 preview one. So we have these milestones. We are gonna be using these milestones to put the issues in them for the ones that we are definitely taking. If we're not taking it, it goes up for grabs and someone can uh, go ahead and pick this up. If we had a whip with an outline of topic stuff, I could do the work. Well, someone needs to write that whip, Christopher, because nobody has done the effort to reevaluate all the topics and do all that. That in itself is a good block of work, deciding what should the how to's, which should stay, which should go, all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, and, and you know, I'm if there were a whip like that, I would certainly review it, and I can make. Uh, I have to figure out the logistics, but you know, we can make a spot in the current doc tree, right? Yeah, yeah. for for new stuff. Yeah, that's, anybody that's can open a whip problem. and start saying, "Here's all the things that I'd like to get in this whip and lay it out," and you'll definitely get feedback from us. So, well, yeah, you need to sure start with the whip and put that. All right, so. Uh, this either goes up for grabs or a painter might be saying he wants it assigned to him and he's going to work on it. I don't know which. He's he's on the edge of saying, yes, I'll take it and I will do the work. Because this could turn into a whip. You could just pull this out and put the whip template issue in there and start filling in the blanks if you wanted. Um, or you can keep this issue separate and create a new issue for, hey, here's how we're going to do the how-to guides. It could go either way. I'm I'm not too particularly worried about it. I give Painter a second. All okay. right, needs a whip and give it to Craig. All right, there we go. Um, Wix for package comments. So uh, do we have a oh. web milestone or? Yes, there is a web milestone. Okay. It And it can go in the web milestone because it can go at any time. Yep. Um, I think there's, I said that, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's the first one for some reason. Yeah, web. T-U-V-W, uh, sort of by W. All right, there we go. Um, someone is doing something funky with the package comments, the summary information comments, um, which is strange. And it's not set in four because the MSI documentation says, hey, this value should be set this way. And this person would like the feature to come back on the package element. So uh, yeah, we can tag this up for grabs, and if this person wants to do the work, they could go ahead and do it. I, th I, I well, I, I, I want to, I want us to be kind of careful about that. You yeah. Know, the, well, the reason we dropped it from four is that the SDK is clear; it doesn't contain you know weaselly words. It should 
include, it should be, it can be. It says contains the phrase, and it gives you a quoted string. Oh, why is this so, why you know, I, I, I'm wary of of. I don't know where I'm doing theme is. stuff. So much noise here. Fine, whatever. Yeah, it was the word should that I kind of went, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should set the value to this. Uh, okay. That, that, That's where I kind of went, the, ah, the, fine. The table at the top is more direct. The table at the top. Of the, Sorry, at the, the, the root of, the, of that this thing tree. Here. Ah, summary information stream reference. <laughs> this documentation. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Summary. Yeah. Which oh. one? Summary information stream <laughs> reference comments. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it it doesn't matter if you want to use that one. That's that's fine. Um, it's in the about part of the doc. Oh, of course. Um, okay. I, I guess I'll I I would drop my objection based on the Weasley words they added in that topic. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I was like, eh, it's like, yeah, all right, fine. So if someone wants to do the work, let's go ahead and mark this up for grabs. They said, I could try to add this. They said they want it. Can we give it to them because they have opened it? Yeah, we can. Yeah. All right, so I think, yeah, let's go ahead and give it to them and we can put it in V5 and they can look at if they want to do it. I don't know what we need a whip. I think it really is just a matter of, yeah. adding well, comments to the summary information stream and moving right, on. Right, right. Yep, okay. I, I, I don't know why, but that's it. All right, Wix. Oh, I've not been doing the numbers. Dang it. 7374. I'm trying to get better at this. 7374. Wix before... Uh, burn image control in a page is visible in other pages. Um, you guys are talking about this, so I don't know anything about this one. I thought you guys it were looked to me one. like this is how V3 has worked, so... We can so look a, at fixing it, but I don't think it's a 401. Sure, but it, uh, sorry. Yeah, good, good. All right, so there's definitely the 401 question. Then there's the, uh, yeah, all right. So people are putting the word Wix 4 up here. We're going to be removing that. Because <laughs> just stop. It's like, this is the behavior you want. The version goes here. I don't know why you're RC4, but it's fine. Um, so the question is how are we going to deal with this going forward for those of you that are opening issues please it's not just don't put wix4 in the title it doesn't help us all right so the question is does anybody want to work on this so i, I unless bob you think sean we unless you disagree with sean we need to bring it 401 i doubt that's the case so all right let's get the process here 401 is throwing a wrench in my processes deciding if we're going to take it to 401 is probably a, an important thing to do first and then after that, does anybody want this to work on this? If not, it goes up for grabs and we move on. Okay. All right. So not 401. Yay. Nay. Wait. Four oh, one. yay on not 401. Yeah, that was really bad, right? Double <laughs> negative. It's got like this visible. No, it's just not. Anyway. Um, all right. Should we put this at 401? No. I agree with Sean. It's not okay. a regression. Great. I, I do think. It, it could be a particularly bad bug um, if it means that you can't have paged images, different images on different pages. Um, but you might be able to make that work with conditions. So, all right. So then it, this goes up for grabs unless someone wants it. I, I can do it in five. Okay. So like, it's fine. If you're like, yeah, if you're interested in doing it, then it's yours. Great, unless you, and then you and Bob can fight over as far as I'm concerned. Great. Trying to get a process down where like if anybody here or someone in chat pops up and says, oh, I'll take that, then it doesn't go up for grabs. It goes assigned to that person and into five preview one. We will get better at this process as we do more of it and when we don't have 401 in the mix as well. I look forward to that day. All right. I mean, so, Bob is always free to take it from me too. <laughs> That's not true. I'm yeah. sure there are some things that you're like, no, I want that one. Um, all right. 7377, uh, schedule XML config, it failed to find matching element ID. Um, the person has provided a verbose log file. And I know, Bob, you looked at this a little bit. This is a issue in four, because they say that it works in three, why they decided to delete the whole template. All right, I'm gonna fix that. And is this a 401? 
Yes. Okay. As far as I can tell, XML config is pretty okay. broken. All right. So broken. this is either you or I, because you looked at it more and said there was something I did a long, long time ago. Um, so either you can give it to me or you're welcome. Like Sean said, you're welcome to take it from me, <laughs> uh, whichever way I want it to go. Um, and let's put it in the 401 milestone. Okay. Um, I'll take it for now. Okay. Um, I might just bug you enough that you'll take it from me. <laughs> well, we'll see. Which has been traditionally how I get you to do work. It's the long, <laughs> that's not true. You ask nicely and I'll do it. Um, uh, oh, well. That's, that's from thing. that change is so long. I don't remember making it. So I'm very curious. Like part of me is curious to see what the fix is. Cause it's like, what? All right, moving on. Seven, three, seven, nine Wix internal UI bootstrapper application screen flash. Uh, Christopher and Sean have been talking about this. Is this a 401? I don't, I thought, I don't know how this is happening. So. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix it. <laughs> but ideally, if Seems someone fixes it, then yeah, it could go in 401. If it's going 401, someone needs to be like working on it <laughs> soon. <laughs> Is it? I mean, I'm not going to be able to pick this one up. So it's you and Bob are the last two, unless someone else wants to jump in chat and debug it. Why do people keep promoting the template? I mean, I could look at it, but I don't know whether I'm going to be able to fix it. Right. I mean, just because you take something doesn't mean that you finish it necessarily. I'm like, there's, that's always the case. Someone could take it, mean, all right, I got this much farther down the line. I'm going to leave it here and then bring it back to triage and be unassigned from it. Do you want to do that? Or painter has offered to debug into it as well. It's somewhere between the two of you, he has a repro and you have that area. Who wants to start with it? I guess if we want to put it for one to start with. So many people yeah, jumping in. I think we should put in 401 and then I don't know, assign it to one of us, I guess. That's what I'm trying to figure out. All right, Christopher said he will take it. Great. 401 to Christopher, and then we'll see how things roll out. Um, and we will have an exact date, but not in the, um, uh, not longer than January 5th. I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that. All right. Um, harvest file does not generate registry information when harvest 64 bit managed. Not complete. I thought there was an issue on heat not doing heat. Um, 64 bit stuff already. Um, it's like a long standing behavior. Um, there, there is. Um, this is slightly weird because, as I point out at the bottom, oh. uh, using the dot net, uh, dot net build, the dot net, uh, the core, yeah. MS build, core, core MS build, whatever you want to call it, um, it actually supports a 64 bit heat.exe. Uh -huh. So we got that, that close. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is that. I don't know that, you know, that was like a um, a fully uh, plumbed through. Uh, no, work. I think it was just make it work um, kind of thing. The, most right. of heat was that. The differences between those two are not fun. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a feature request. I don't want it. Does anybody want it? Uh, it's, it's definitely not 401. Um, so up for grabs, and we'll see if anybody wants to pick it up in the future. We can, we can remove Wix 4. Bob, is that much? Can you just start removing Wix 4 from these things? Sure. Thank you. Bugs me. All right. Um, 7383. Harvest file produces invalid output when harvesting a type lib file. And uh, Bob says it's a duplicate of 3412. So, all right, let's ship this thing out then, right? Works for me. All right, so that's duplicate, resolved, duplicate, done. All right, um, directory source name produces incorrect default dir value, 7384. Uh, this, <laughs> this is so frustrating. This is a perfect example of why you don't fix bugs super late. Anyway, uh, this got exposed. This bug got exposed because we I fixed 
the short name generation and in so doing exposed this this bug was depending on another bug when i fix that other bug this one starts failing anyway net result i have a fix for this and it should be 401 and i am disappointed that it slipped through but at least we have a test for it now i have a pull request hanging out waiting for the new 401 process ready to go so that will go let's see harvest uh yes all right 7385 harvest file does not generate registration when harvesting a reg file i don't think harvest file harvests yeah reg files so this is a feature request it could go up for grabs and we can move on i don't know what you would do there probably not harvest file it's not, not harvest something. file it's yeah. something it's some new feature there uh they're disappearing on me i have to be careful here uh harvest file let's see uh, 7386 prerequisite required dialogue. I think this is another one. All right. So, yes. Sean and Christopher brought this up. Sean and he have been discussing options to list multiple prereqs instead of just having a generic, hey, you need to install your prereqs here. Um, this isn't 401, is it? Right. This is a feature. Yeah, this is a feature. All right. So it goes five. Uh, or no, sorry. Does anybody want it right now, like to work on it? Because if not, then it goes for ups for grabs. If someone wants it, then it can go into five. You can assign it to me. All right. Uh, and we'll put it in five. Yep. Build requirements, 7388. The build requirements are git command line. No, okay. So we have a readme that says install these sets of workloads. They're supposed to give you these workloads. It's supposed to give you node. One of them is supposed to give you node. And I assume, I thought Git just comes with Visual Studio. I don't know. I haven't created a clean machine. I don't know what to do with this. I guess more information could be added to the readme. Is that, I guess. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's for the doc page. Well, there's the readme has a list of things. Not mention the readme. Okay, right. I'm surprised. You should get this from Visual Studio from that. I thought you would get it from that workload, but I might. I probably have no install for something else. So I don't know. That's fine. If someone wants to add these to the readme, that would be fine. So, uh, Christopher, do you want to do that? Well, hold on. We, we've talked about moving a lot of the development stuff out of doc. Yes. Is it not out of doc? In, into, uh, it's not entirely out of doc. All right. So I, I whips are the other problem. Yeah. So whips I know about whips is just like a slow process that I'm going to have to do manually. Cause I don't, cause my decision, I don't expect people to go and do all the work themselves. Um, that. Yeah. It like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I haven't got a clean machine, and I don't really want to spin up a clean VM just to try to do one step at a time. But, I mean, yeah, you need Git because you're dealing with GitHub, so you should put you should have Git somewhere. I didn't think about that. And then Node. And you can install Heatwave, but you don't need Heatwave because you can edit the Wix projects however you want. Um, but if you want to load in a solution, then, yeah, you would need Heatwave. So you, but you definitely don't need that for building. Um, that's purely a dev kind of thing. I'm betting that Git although it comes with Visual Studio, does not um, expose expose it on the path. Like Maybe. NuGet. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, it's, it's the same thing with NuGet, right? Um, okay. So, so the, all right, so add it to the path. And Node should, I, I mean, we're not using Node. That's just using Visual Studio's whatever they're building for their template thingy. So you have to have that workload installed, which is annoying. But validate web projects. That's what it needed. Um, so I've never seen this RC thing, this SXCA. So, all right. So I guess there's, all right, we can put this up for grabs. Someone wants to go through. I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's like, yeah, okay. Add some more things to read me, I guess. I don't know what to do with this down here. I've never seen this problem. So, 
All right. Okay, Christopher Painter says he's willing to do it. I like clean machines and getting all the little build requirements. Like, yeah, okay. You have to go create a clean machine and then install Wix and then test constantly. Install Visual Studio with these workloads. It's like, I don't know. All right. Um, cool. Thanks, Christopher. Do appreciate that. It's just like uh, testing those things is challenging at best. Um, 7394. Provide a uh, Wix internal UI default splash screen. Uh, important UAC, it would be a good idea. A couple things. Automatically author a stock splash screen for a BA or have a compiler warning saying it's important to have a splash screen. I don't know. I mean, a warning is... It, if you really need a splash screen, then... I don't, I don't know. Sean, do you... <laughs> Do you know have more context on this? It's not 401, right? It's like, no. It's a new but feature. So if you're using this internal UI bootstrap application and you don't have any prerequisites, then like the way Windows focus works is that you know the MSI UI is not going to get focus. So you're you're gonna double click on the EXE. And if you need elevation, then the US, uh, UAC is going to flash on the taskbar. It's not going to have focus. Interesting. Where if there's no UAC, then the MSI is going to come up, but it's not going to be focused. So it might be hiding behind Windows. Okay. They say, you said mm -hmm. when there are no prerequisites, does that mean no none to be installed or none authored? Yeah, none to be installed. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which. Ideally, that's what happens is, you know, you, you yeah, require yeah. .NET, but hopefully it's already there. So that's a warning, right? If this, then this, then warning. If using this BA and no prereqs, then warning. Oh, no, even in the yeah, prereq so, case, yeah. they made it. That's why this BA and right. no splash screen. Then warn with this. Yeah. All right. Could go with five. Hello. So who, does someone want it if they want it? Otherwise, we toss it up for grabs. The warning seems reasonable. I don't think we should automatically put a stock splash screen in. We'd have to pick one and the Wix, none of the Wix logo or anything like that is right. Um, so it's kind of like a a warning with a nice story behind it that says, hey, you probably want to add a splash screen here because you're using this for these reasons. Basically the same thing we just went through here. Or a link to a page just talks about all that kind of thing. So that seems reasonable. Anybody want to do that? Three, I mean, two. I, I can do that. Okay. If, and if someone gives me a splash screen that we want to use, we could do that instead. I don't know that I'm hesitant to provide a We'd need a generic splash screen. I I don't know what it would be right now. Yeah, we have some stock UI, but we don't have a splash screen UI image. I mean, we'd have to go pick something off of Unsplash <laughs> and put up there. I mean, a one pixel black splash screen. Oh, would that work? I don't know. I don't. But that would look weird, right? Because you're still gonna get the window. No, the splash screen has no window Chrome. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, uh, a one yeah. pixel transparent ping. I just, <laughs> yes, yes, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right, well. So anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. it sounds like something to go to decide whether a warning or come up with a good generic splash, stock splash screen that, to use um, that people could then replace. I, I don't know. Like, go out and do it. So you can assign it to me. Yep. And then oh, and if someone tells me which way to go, then I can do that. I, I actually was serious. A, a default <laughs> one pixel ping, transparent ping, would might bake be the, the whole system the, out. The right default. No splash yeah. screen, but enough to get a window here such that the next UAC prompt shows up correctly. Such that the yeah, such that the UAC prompt shows up correctly. It's interesting. If it works, it's kind of creative. Yeah, yeah. Junior, yeah, Junior, <laughs> this is not the place to ask questions 
uh, general, I mean, if you have a specific question, the things that you've been working on, but general usage questions are better to go send to the GitHub discussions. Uh, we're not gonna uh, just uh, drop in. So, uh, wait, did I skip one? 7394, so 7397. 7397, accessibility. Someone says it's accessibility issue. GUI items are in the wrong order in the verify ready dialogue in the Wix UI extension. All right, so someone wants these in a different order for screen reader things. Okay. Cool, we have an accessibility area. Does anybody want to take it? Anybody? Nope. All right, up for grabs. There's a whole slew of someone that wants to go through and do a sweep of understanding all the accessibility requirements and pushing them down into yeah. other code. 7398, um, offer alternative text for these banner images. Can you do that in MSI? I think so. I, I, mm, I, okay, I've never tried. There, there's, you know, the tooltip. Yeah. The, oh, you can put like a tooltip on it? Yeah, well, mm. yes. And in fact, the images, the image controls are like the only place where that I could find in the entire MSI SDK that explicitly mentioned screen readers. So it might actually be the, the, the way to go. Um, now, you know, this is obviously, this is just another accessibility thing. Um, and I will add both of these to the, to the tracking issues that we have. Um, fair warning though, the, the problem that I'm seeing with a lot of these is, is localization. You know, you add alt text to an image. Well, that alt text is in a language of some sort. Um, so we add that and instantly there's going to be like, you know, blanks right. or errors, depending on how we do it. Yeah. No, not easy. So. Yep. All right. Accessibility is a huge undertaking inside MSI UI which is also very yeah. ancient. So lots of things to, to do there. All right. Yep. Yep. 7399 package state incorrectly set to cache instead of present in managed bootstrapper application. Okay. By the way, the accessibility things are not 401. That's pretty easy. Uh, but this, uh, cached versus present, the state arg is wrong. We should have deleted, uh, Something. Uh, I see. We deleted a value in the native enum, but didn't do it in the managed one. Uh, okay. So this is probably 401 then? Yeah, that's 401. Yeah. All right. We have to obsolete a value and rejigger the numbers? Oh, okay. No, we should just delete it. But if they've already built against 400 with Wix 4... I mean, it's it's broken because the native and the managed have two different values. Yeah, but if they built against four, then we, okay. We wouldn't be maintaining source compatibility if we if we just delete it. Yeah. Can we can we just overlap them? We're not yeah. supporting source compatibility. Uh, okay. Is sorry. Say that again. We're not supporting source compatibility. Between four zero zero and four zero one. Yep. Uh, so if you, okay. So you can't, you have to rebuild your code. Well, rebuilding is fine, but you're saying not if, even source compatibility. No, no. Well, that, 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 that sounds, that sounds worrisome. I mean, I mean this we can is... obsolete this, right? No, we can't because <laughs> The the native value of cached is undefined because it doesn't exist. You know, cached, I don't remember the exact values, but you know, absent is one. Mm -hmm. Cached doesn't exist, but it's two in managed. And then present is three in managed and two in native, and then superseded is four in managed and three in native. Right. And the engine is gonna always tell you the native one. Right. So we could push the cache one to obsolete and make it the same as the second one that you listed was present or whatever number it was. I, I had to do this with the um, the output types. I had the same thing with the output types. 
um, for don't. a while. So if we obsolete it and move it and give it the right number, then it should work, right? Like if you have the old value, it'll work. I mean, it, it'll, it'll behave the same. Because if why you- Why would we not delete it? Because if you have libraries built against 4.0 or 4.01, I mean, the window's small. It's like, that's a, that's a one thing that's in its benefit. But if you have libraries built against them, you will be broke. Your libraries won't work between the two of those values. But if you have the library built, then it's built against the wrong values and it's going to be bad. Uh, I'm not talking about binary compatibility. I'm just talking about being able to slide for 401 <laughs> under 400 and you know not break. So um, I, but is present, is I, present I the wrong number too then? So it's not just cache that's wrong. Present is wrong I too. I did a bunch of work in V4 to swap these. So I thought we already agreed that we dropped source compatibility and we added binary compatibility. I mean, that's I, I did a lot of work to make that happen. So if you're going to tell me that I did all that work for nothing, then no, I'm, not I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm I'm struggling to understand how I how do you how do you not offer source compatibility if you have binary compatibility? Because we can add a parameter to a method, and then that's going to break you if you try to build it again. But it's going to work with. It'll work with binary compatibility compatibility because underneath the covers it's using just structs it's it's not binary yeah. compatibility it, the binary compatibility is not at the managed layer the binary compatibility is at the interface layer the the message layer yeah no i'm i'm, I'm familiar with that work okay so that that's that's the difference so then yeah if you're if it's going to break managed compatibility then then we can delete the by all the other numbers are wrong because cached is still there so all the numbers are wrong it's not just yeah, that cached so, is wrong. It's all the numbers are wrong. Yeah, so present and superseded are wrong. Okay, so all the numbers are wrong. <laughs> Absent is correct. Oh, right, sorry. The first Unknown one, sorry. is correct. Present is wrong and superseded is wrong. Right, all right. All right, then I guess we'll delete it and uh, people will build They'll get the break and then they'll move to present. But it shouldn't be a problem, hopefully, because they cached wasn't going to work for them anyway. Nope. Okay. The the binary compatibility, when I heard binary compatibility, I heard the managed layer binary compatibility, but that's not what you meant. You meant the uh interface binary compatibility, and that's the miscommunication there. So all right. Uh, moving on. So, so sorry. So this will be a 401 and Sean, you said you're going to delete it. Is yeah. that it? That's, that's it, right? If you have any ideas of how to write a test for this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, know. You need to write a BA that, but how would you do a BA that tests the old value? New? I mean, you have to test it by keeping it obsolete and saying that cache is the same as present at this point. I mean, I guess, because cached, yeah, that's would be the workaround is that you'd mark it obsolete, you set it to be the same value as present, and then present and supersede would both move up into the correct spot. That's essentially the game I played with output type a long time ago. And then there's no breakage and everything just starts working. Right? The the users the and the weirdness, of course, is that cache is the same as present, but people that can build against both codes and they won't even notice. So that would be I'm binary compatibility. That'd be compatibility at the managed layer as well, but you know, I'm deleting it. <laughs> so all right, so then then delete it, and I don't know how you're going to test it because there will be nothing else to test. It's gone. I guess you can val validate that present and superseded are correct. That would be the test, probably. That the numbers are when when it's supposed to be present to be. I don't. I mean, it's a lot to test the BAs like that. Maybe an end to end test could do it. I don't know. That might be the easiest place to do it. Okay. Uh, assert absent equals two. It's a short test. <laughs> Perfectly unit testable. 
That that's actually interesting. You could assert the, but I don't know how you you'd have to get to the internal native code. I mean, that's it's just too small fit. I mean, it's it's one of those, yeah, oops. Like, what are we gonna do? We're not gonna write a test that verifies that the enums on managed and native are the same everywhere. I mean, that's that's just more code validating that numbers are the same. It's eh, that's a little bit crazy. Yeah, you could do it, but seriously. So yeah. It happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, .NET 8 Preview 3 added a new feature, and Wix 4 ignores it because it came out later. I <laughs> Come on, people. Sorry. This just bugged me a little bit the way they wrote this. Um, .NET 8 is adding this new artifacts layout thing. It's interesting. Uh, I saw it. Wix 4 doesn't support it because Wix 4 came out before it. So um, I'll take this in five because I am curious to go dig into this whole artifacts thing. Um, and Wix should play along nicely with it, but Wix 4 will not. Um, and this is not a bug. So anyway, sorry, minor wording issue there, but it's fine. I will take that in five. All right, XML config decompiler produce custom table instead of this, uh, 7404. Uh, the decompiler custom action for XML config was out of date and this person has done the work to, has, has opened a PR to um, fix that decompiling. Now, decompiling our own extensions was a very low to non-priority in V4. Um, so should we take this back to 401, given that they have the fix? I'm, I don't, Kind of on the fence on this one. Because it was such a low priority. Do you guys have any thoughts? I don't it's really care about decompiling. Yeah. Sorry, Bob. It's, uh, it's testable. So if they add a test, because I'm pretty sure this doesn't have a test in the PR. Um, I'm not up. sure. What, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's no test today for it. Um, because it came in pretty late. Because it came in late. Well, I mean, they got extension. Test. Extension decom decompilation came in late. Yeah. So if they add a test, all right. So this is an example of things I was going to do. Some people have opened pull requests early, which is actually really great. Um, if they were thinking they wanted to get them into 401, which of course there was no idea of when they wrote, created these PRs, but maybe they're hoping, um, I'll go add the comment and say, hey, if you add a, if you add a uh, unit test into the same pull request, then we could look at bringing it to 401, this one. Um, and without that, then it'll go into five and it'll be fixed in Wix 5. It'll be great. So we'll go from there. Honestly, a unit test either way would be really good though. But this is a low priority area. All right. So that's 7404. Um, can we give it to this person? We can, right? Yep. All right, yep. let's give it to this person so they have the pull request. I think that says the right thing. All right, 7407, argument null exception when the component element has subdirectory, but no directory element. This is very subtle, silly bug. I already have the fix for it. It's a crash. It's a very small fix. So I think we should take it in 401. Um, technically speaking, it's you get an error message, but you also get a crash. The crash is, of course, the scariest part of that. So it's a one-line fix in the end. Barely that. It's a one-word fix in the end. But anyway, so you can give that to me, and I will. I have the all set up with a test. And we'll put that in 401. Get that in 401. All right. Um, 7408, harvesting project names with spaces. So this person found that heat was does not do the replacement when harvesting and did the work to um, do the replacements so that the uh, non or invalid characters have spaces in them. And they have done a PR for this. So uh, I think, and, and this is a change in Wix 4 to make these valid names that just work now. Um, so I think this is the same thing. If they give us a test for this, we would bring it to 401, otherwise it'll go into five. Oh, I see, you're actually using something. I'm not sure how to add testing. There are heat tests here. All right, cool. I will add that comment also to the pull request. If they add tests there, then we can uh, look at bringing this in 401. It's a, it's a really small change. 
um, in that case, unless anybody disagrees. No? All right. So, and we can assign it to them since we found that people that open their own issues can have it assigned to them. Pharmacy project basis. All right. So 7413 MSM validation still broken. Bob, wow, you've done more looking at this than I have. Something is weird is going on. There should be no product code in a merge module. Yeah, the product code is actually in the merge mod cube for some. <laughs> it just doesn't make any reason. sense. It, it doesn't make sense. any sense. Um, there is logic in the in the ice runner that fixes that, uh, but it doesn't cover the case where the merge module has a property. So that was just you know a weak unit test. Or, I see. Yeah. Um, I if the merge module the, has a property. Oh, you have to have a property. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, fine. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If there's looks, a property sir. table in yep. the merge module, yep. um, then the logic to fix up the product code is uh, bypass. Probably, it's a it's a problem. Yeah. Okay. But I I can see how the bug gets through. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, now that said, I I was not able to reproduce the other errors, but the first one. So is the first one a four hundred one? Sorry, thing? the first one. The this well, ice ten. I mean, merge yeah. module validation is busted if you have a property table. Uh, correct. I have. I was not able to. I have not yet been able to reproduce the ISO threes. Okay. We should fix uh, the ten. Yes, and I believe I know what's wrong there. All right. So you good? Take this. I think we should take this to four hundred one. Like, yeah. Merge yeah. module validation should work. So. Well, yes, that said, the ISO threes are still kind of like an open open issue, open question. So yeah. but I will I will uh yeah. Okay. So we'll take that in four oh one. Are you saying you want me to add a whole unit test for harvesting projects and then it'll scope for a simple bug fix? Uh no, just a a unit test that validates that projects with spaces are still being handled correctly, Mike, um, on the previous issue. So essentially that, you know, that it doesn't have any other, that it has the desired fix or um, desired effect with no other side effects as much as we can validate within the test. That's what we're looking for with the tests and those things. I mean, we have existing tests for harvesting projects. So could I you just, just rename there. one of them? Yeah, or add and just copy one of them, add another function, put a space in it, something like that. Actually, yeah, just put a space in one of the ones that exist. That's going to expose the problem and the fix. Yeah, you did that with the all the unit tests. I did that with all the unit tests. I added a space everywhere to all the tests just to make sure I flushed it out everywhere in one big go. So, yeah. And now it's really annoying, so thank you. Sorry, but <laughs> it's good. I, I, I debated it, but in the end, I'm like, I think that, so. All right, uh... Downgrade error message instead of set to downgrade set to uh, downgrade 7416. Downgrade error message. I can't read this. Is instead of disallow error upgrade message when disallow set to yes. So they're getting the downgrade error message instead of the disallow upgrade message when disallow set to yes. Okay. So there's a mix up here in the assigning of these two error messages. Okay, got it. And they tracked it down, saw the pull request. So they said, I could create a PR if you want. And then they did. <laughs> so great. So I think this is the same thing. We should take this at 401. This is, yeah. Uh -huh. Bummer. Yeah, okay. Um, did they add a unit test? Oh, no. Nope. Actually, if you look at the, oh yeah, scroll down. I. What am I looking for? What is this? unchanged files with check annotations i'm I, not sure what this is i don't either i'm like this is some new github behavior i'm not seeing all right i don't know I what approved, that is i approved the build and i think tests are failing ah okay yeah but i don't it doesn't oh. seem like it'd be related okay it might be it could be the error message changed yeah but 
No, that doesn't. That doesn't. Make sense. Not, All right. not in that test. Okay. That's just anyway, weird. But. so yeah, I I think adding a test is probably a good thing in this space. So uh, I, I same thing. This this will be a this is probably a good thing for four hundred one. We sign to them. This is great. Add a test and then hopefully that test and then a rerun. Maybe it just needs a rerun and the other tests will not fail. Or if they're actually failing. Scary. Layout to a new directory. That should not be related to this at all. Can skip right. over corrupt local file. That these should not be related to disallow unless yeah, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. All right. So yeah. So go leave a comment on that one to add a test and then we could take that 401 as well. All right. That's a lot of things that we just went through. Slides, questions, comments, other things people have that they wanted to talk about out there. Stuff going on. I think we've answered all of them. Been some good discussion through. I think we've answered everybody's questions. If not, ask it again because we missed it. We needed to talk about your offline question. Right. So that, I was going to do that now once I, I've got everybody else typing their questions if they had any. So. A question I had was, um, as I was doing some bundle work, I ended up experimenting with the self-contained bootstrapper applications and then ran down and then was having troubles with it and ran into issues that were open against uh, uh, the .NET team where they're saying that self-contained is not supported for class libraries, I think was the the general gist of it. And so that's what I was, so I was curious where we were at with self-contained bootstrap applications and should we be recommending them since they're class libraries, but it got complicated with all the extra native loading conversations and things like that to make the whole feature work. So that was my question. And I was curious, what's, is there support? Oh, are we supported here or are they not expecting this to work and it just happens to be working right now? I guess that's kind of where I was getting to. No, it's supported. So in order for the in order for our native host to load the BA, it needs the runtime JSON and the depths.json. But for a class library, those files aren't necessarily generated. So if you add the MS build property enable uh, dynamic loading, then when you build a class library, you'll get those two files, those two JSON files. But uh, technically speaking, they don't support building that as self-contained. So the other way to get those two files is to just put out put type XE and then you just have to add a dummy main method and then everything works just like it does with enable dy dynamic loading. But the difference is that technically the .NET team supports building an output type XE as self-contained. That's I crazy. And it, and essentially burn is replacing the XE. So you delete the XE because burn is the the replacement for it, the the alternative host. I mean, .NET Core builds your application as a DLL, and then the XE is just a really tiny native application that loads the runtime, and then yeah, it's the host. Your main method, right? It's the host, which is what burn is essentially acting in this case. That's again, that's crazy. Yeah, so they, they call theirs the app host, and we're the custom native host. So is this, I, so I'm, <laughs> I'm confused. So the output type for a BA, and this is only .NET Core, .NET Framework is completely different. So .NET Core, the output type for a BA should be XE, and then ignore the XE. If you care about being technically supported, I mean, building self-contained with the class library works just fine. 
It's the only the, difference the, between the, the two is the EXE. As long as you have that enable dynamic loading MS build property set to true, the only difference between the two is the XE. And that issue listed other things that didn't work, like something about ADR not working when you're in this mode. Was that is that was that not related? They had they had a list of. Uh, can I find the URL? Um, too many pages open. Let's see. Yeah. I minimized everything before the meeting. I think their overall point was that. Um, it, it will work for our scenario, but it won't work for other people that are trying to do something else. Yeah, all right, I found it. Let's see, so I might brought uh, the right thing here. All right, so this is the issue. Fisher support self-contained with enable dynamic loading is true. Right, and and you this is what you just said, right? It enables the depth JSON, the runtime configuration, and then here, this is the part that's important to note that the SDK side would have to do that. There are other components we need to be able to handle this. So the assembly dependency resolver has no notion of self-contained. This I think was the one that was the most interesting to me. So if you tried to load a plugin or something, is this is this is used for plugins, right? Like loading other assemblies. Yeah, that's used for dynamically loading an assembly. Right. In .NET Core. So this will this was the thing that concerned me the most, has no notion of self-contained and will break in bad ways if used. So if you're self-contained, you just can't do this is what that says. But that's universally true? Or is it only true in this case? Um, I'm, I'm asking about these because I'm wondering, do we need to caveat the statement so that people that are trying to create BAs and say, I'm going to create a self-contained BA DLL, then we need to have the list of, by the way, these are the things that we know or that the .NET team knows will not work. Don't do those. You cannot do those. Does that make sense? Like, So if you build a, a class library with enable dynamic loading equals true and you publish it as self-contained, then it will work for our custom host. But if you try to use that as a component in some other application, then that's not going to work. But all we care about is whether our, you know, DNC host can load up your BA. Right. Well, I'm I'm worried about like WPF. The the more advanced things that expect these any of these things to work for them. That's what I'm, the next thing I'm worried about is what are the knock on effects from there? Now that you are a in our host self contained, what have you inherited by being self contained? And like, oh, this particular feature in WPF won't work because it expects to work this way or something. I, I was trying to get to something like that and the 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 fuzziness of where this was left made me go, I don't understand what's going on. And I'm concerned that we have unknown things, possibly other things that we just haven't hit yet. That's what I was trying to figure out based on this um, open issue. Does that make sense? And yeah, I mean, our scenario works. It's the other scenarios that he's complaining about. The just creating a generic extension and have it work in any host. Uh, uh, sorry, self contained. Building a building self a self contained class library. He's just trying to say that if you build a self contained class library, then it's not going to work for other use cases. Other use cases? Like, you mean? A com server or a component or whatever. Right. It will. But the rest of the .NET should operate correctly within it being self-contained. Like all the features right. of .NET inside it will be fine. Yes. Okay. All right. Now the the differences 
uh, like trimmed, if you want to do trimmed and self-contained, well, they don't really support doing trimming for any of this. Right. It might work. We have a test that shows that a really simple one will work with trimming, but. But really simple isn't the problem case with trimming. No, never. Yeah. But basically I did that so that we can say, you know, Wix is doing what we can do. And most of the problems, or if not all of the problems are going to be in the .NET runtime itself. Right. Where you should go create an issue with them saying that I want to use trimming for this. And right. It's not working. Right. And I'm, I'm trying to up front be able to set expectations for people on how they work. For example, there is all those, uh, there was a series of discussions recently about people trying to create single file class libraries, self, self-contained self single file BA DLLs, which of course doesn't work. Um, and the, the fact that there's lots of confusion around this, trying to get the ground rules laid out for people clearly so that the expectations are correct. Not being able, like, don't trim. Well, I guess you said you can trim and then figure out if it works. And if it doesn't work, it's not us that have created the trimming problem. But it's not officially supported by .NET either. So don't be surprised when it doesn't work. You just have to go take this to one more issue that .NET would need to solve to enable trimming in this generically or whatever. Like, okay. Um, so trimming in general is not supported, but the scenarios we have for loading everything in proc should all be, is, is all working now. Yeah. Even when self-contained. Okay. Yeah. Now I guess one problem that we have with trimming that's like our, something we would need to fix is the calm stuff where we're, we're relying on the .NET runtime to create a com wrapper for us to go between managed and native. So I think they're currently working on like adding a source generator where we could make that work to where we're not relying on that stuff. But uh, that's like the last part for us that we're using stuff that's not trim compatible. All right. There is a crazy amount of work necessary to change the .NET framework to enable the .NET core to enable these scenarios. Like I was surprised how much work was on their side to enable this functionality. I knew there's work on our side. I didn't know there's that much on their side to change. Just in general, the future yeah. in general. Like WPF just is really bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> WPF trimming. is brutal. But it's working, right? With trimming, not really. Oh, oh, no, no. WPF and trimming is a completely different problem. I meant just the whole .NET Core managed BAs required a fair number of changes in .NET Core. Or features or scenarios that they had to add for that that they did not have originally. And that surprised me. It was really just the being able to load our component into the default domain. And supporting self-contained, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was more of adding a code path that doesn't block things than it was, you know, actually building the features or adding a lot of code. All right, all right. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it worked in .NET Framework. Why does it work in .NET Core? I, there's huge differences. It was just... They were clearly adding scenarios one by one as opposed to just making everything work for .NET Framework, which is the only way to build .NET Core. The threads in here are the behind the scenes that I not kept up on were just very interesting. So it was just, it was a lot of work, dude. <laughs> so I was impressed. I was like, holy cow, it's a lot of work. And, and it felt like they were fighting it. So, or not fighting it, but I don't know. It's hard to get it prioritized. It's what it looked like a lot of times. So a lot of effort to continue to make that go. 
All right. I've tried to fill a whole lot of space. Nobody else is asking questions. I don't know if I put people to sleep with that whole conversation or if it's just like that's some deep internal stuff I don't want to have to worry about. And hopefully we've done enough to hide most of it. Um, but self-contained in these scenarios works. Um, and single file never would work. Um, and I'm going to have to go think about this a little bit, what it means for some of the things that I've been working on. Okay, so uh, we'll be back two weeks. This is Tuesday, by the way, our first Tuesday in a while. Um, that'll put us into May 2nd. Uh, from here would be Tuesday, May 2nd at 9.30 Pacific time, a.m. Pacific time. I assume everybody's still good with that. Are you uh, sure you don't want to move it to Thursday so we could be May 5th? May 4th, 4th, rather. May 4th. Yeah, that's all right. We're on okay. Tuesdays now. We're going to stick to Tuesdays for a while, see what happens. We have, you know, I think more people than we usually do. Uh, but, you know, we certainly had a whole lot of people asking questions uh, or interacting. That's probably mostly the, the topic, which is good. I'm all good. It's all good. So anyway, we'll stay on Tuesday. We'll be May 2nd. Um, on that date, I think the big thing for that will be triage once again. And we will, from there be looking to nail down the 401 date on June 5th or earlier, uh, but probably no earlier than May 18th. Um, so we'll get that. Uh, that'll be the big decision then. And depending on you know other things, we will probably, depending on how many other issues in, how much time we spend on uh, 401 wrangling, uh, we'll be talking about, we'll go through the V future uh, milestone. That's the big thing I want to try to get to as soon as possible. Um, but the 401 will distract us, which is why I don't want to be doing these dot releases all the time. So um, that's the plan. No other questions coming in? Good, good. So two weeks, we'll be back. We will do a quick wraparound on 401. And then we hopefully, if nothing else is pressing, we'll start digging into v5 future items and anything else that comes up and things that people want to talk about uh maybe sean bob or i will bring you know a design discussion for a whip that we want to talk about about doing things in v5 maybe we'll see um that's all i got so i guess we'll be back in two weeks until then all of you guys uh you know keep uh keep working we're we're gonna do a 401 here and we're gonna start five I'm going to go do the changes to the repository right now, and you'll see that. So until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.